this thing anymore. The engine mounts went out about a year ago. We just really need more people. Scott Haldane is about to turn back the years to help the YMCA move forward. He's just barely hanging on. Oh, he'll work in disguise among his thousands of employees and volunteers. And when his secret mission is up, he'll reveal his true identity to the people he met oh, yeah. and leave everyone stunned. Oh, my God. Thank you. With the world economy in a fragile state, top corporations must adapt to survive. The bosses of some of Canada's biggest companies are about to take extreme action. To stay ahead of the game, they're going undercover in their own organizations. The YMCA Canada is a federated charity with 51 independently run facilities. The organization has existed for over a century here, with the fundamental purpose of serving the community and helping people achieve their full potential. Half of all Canadians have been to the Y at some point in their lives, and today YMCA Canada has an annual membership in excess of 2 million. My name is Scott Haldane, and I'm present CEO of YMCA Canada. Each YMCA has its own boss. Scott's role is to provide countrywide leadership. We sometimes say that the YMCA is well known, but not known well. So we're seen as an organization with programs and services, not an organization that is committed to changing something in Canadian society for the better, which is important for an organization that's trying to raise money and trying to recruit volunteers. You can't. Pretty well all the programs that the YMCA offers, there are other alternatives that people can choose from, either delivered by the private sector, delivered by the public sector, or delivered by other charities. People have choices to purchase it elsewhere. Being not-for-profit doesn't mean being for loss. You have to have both mission and margin. If we don't drive a margin at the end of the day, we actually become unsustainable and disappear. I started part-time. I worked as a lifeguard. It was 43, 44 years ago, and uh, the rest is history. I lost my dad two years ago. He was a Lancaster pilot during World War II. And he told a story about the YMCA tea truck arriving to the base. And it was kind of the way that life was made normal for these young kids, middle of a war, not knowing whether they'd come back from the mission that they were on. In fact, a lot of them didn't. So there's a big connection between my dad and what he stood for and what his values were in the YMCA. That means a lot to me. Are you My kids are Y kids. They learn to swim at the Y. My daughter is actually literally followed in my footsteps. She uh, works for the YMCA. We're developing a common web platform for all the Ys mm -hmm. in the country. I've seen the demo already. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's great. We really can't separate who we are and who we are as a family from the organization. Yeah. It's in our blood. But this week, he's taking drastic action, transforming his appearance to ensure the future of the organization. I'm going undercover to find out how people describe the Y. Because I'm convinced that the only way to break through this best kept secret in town is to have the 40,000 staff and volunteers be able to tell the story. But I don't know what they're saying. I want to find that out. While I'm undercover, I'll be assuming the identity of Bob Aiken. I'll be posing as a volunteer and trainee who's being followed by a film crew making a documentary about changing careers and starting over. It's been a long time since people saw me with hair. With his appearance totally transformed, will his family recognize the stranger in the house? What do you think? What? What, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> I'm going undercover to visit YMCA's across the country. <laughs> My kids have never seen him with hair. Keep the hair. I think I might keep it. No! <laughs> My baby. I definitely think that this guy's is going to work. They recognize him as not having hair, so I think that's going to have a big impact. Oh, boy. I gotta go. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Bye, Molly. I think. <laughs> Before Scott hits the road, he's got one last group of people to break the news to. His board of executives. What do you think? My new look for the next week or so. I'm going to be undercover as Bob Aiken to better understand how our employees are reflecting the YMCA's mission and able to talk about it. I'm going to be meeting employees across the country. I'm feeling a bit nervous. <laughs> Do you think they'll recognize me? No. 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 <laughs> I think the YMC will benefit from Scott going undercover because we're really trying to learn from all of the people who work across the country. I'm off. Wish me luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. One of the things about being CEO that I learned a long time ago is that I'm not the one who knows how to do everything. So I'm going to be ready to learn. It's going to be good overwhelming, to be honest. 
coming up, secret boss Scott reaches terrifying new heights. Yeah, feeling a little bit unsteady. Oh. And later, his emotions get the better of him. You could look back on this with some bitterness. But I choose not to. Yesterday, Scott Haldane was CEO of one of Canada's most iconic institutions. Today, he's undercover as trainee Bob and is heading to Silver Lake Camp in Kelowna, B.C. to work with one of its groundskeepers. Quite often, the guy at the back of the house, the groundskeeper, the cooks, and so on, can be taken for granted. So often, they don't get as much attention and perhaps don't get the resources that they need to really do the job that they've been asked to do. So I'm not sure what to expect. So I've got to meet somebody and i got to start my relationship with him by lying to him. That's not the way I usually live my life. I have to keep reminding myself that it's for the greater good. Let's do I'm Stu. I'm Bob. Hey, Bob. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Oh, we'll put you to work today for sure. Good. Yeah. This is our uh, our pride and joy. It's been around. I it's been see. around. It's had some miles. It's, it's got some miles on it, yeah. Yeah. Want to go for a ride? I'd love to. All right. I'm surprised this door actually opens. Stewart is in charge of maintaining the site and getting the camp ready for the busy spring season. Okay, well, let's have a quick move oh, under the hood here. You can see what powers this bad way. A bit of a gas... Uh, a little bit of, a bit of gas when you're in there. Yeah, I think uh, the exhaust moved down on the priority list quite, yeah. quite some time ago. Oh, so. Look at that. This engine's been through, uh, you know where and back. Engine mounts went out on it about a year ago. That truck certainly paints a picture about how they keep this camp going at very low cost to make sure that, that lots of kids can come to camp. We're keeping our fingers crossed somebody sees a need for a bobcat. <laughs> but uh, it would obviously be a real helpful tool up here. We do rent one now and again. And I'd like to share with the CEO that he's working with the tools that are past their prime, well past their prime. And that's perfect for, for a donor or a you know, local car dealer or, or someone who can, who can really you know, make a contribution, in-kind contribution, to keep this camp going. We'll head down to the teepees there. we got to start looking at getting teepees up for our summer camp, so that'll be the first place to put you to work. We're going to okay. grab a ladder. I hope you're not afraid of heights. We're going to uh, put our muscles on. Just continue to work our way up until we've got this thing standing straight. Let her go, and we're going to slide that up. Slide it up some more. I think you were doing about 99% of that lifting. Getting ready for camp and getting everything in place is a physical job. Come around with that end. You want to pull the whole teepee down. And it looks like it's caught up there a little bit. We'll head up on the ladder and we'll just get that straightened out. You're sure, eh? Try to keep your ladder centered on the pole. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's feeling a little bit unsteady here. Carry on. I got your ladder. Just the fact that we're not anchored in, we don't have a safety harness, doesn't meet our YMCA safety protocol. Oh, I got you. Now, he's in a difficult position. He's trying to get the work done. At the same time, he's trying to be safety conscious. It puts him in a difficult position. We really need to reinforce those safety protocols. Need a bit more height. You're holding on down there, right? I got right? you. Go ahead. Coming up to the last few rungs, you know, not having anything to hold on to except the TP. And that certainly got me past my comfort zone. There we go. Excellent. You're hey, no success. Up. Okay, back down. Go on down. Can I have a nap? Indoor. Can you have a nap? Can we have a nap? <laughs> There's a hundred beds <laughs> on the property, so take your pick. <laughs> that was hard work. On the left, in the room on the left-hand side, you'll find a couple of bags of grass seed. I'm going to grab the heavy part, and that's cedar. <laughs> you let me know if you need a hand, and we'll take a break. Don't I'm forget, starting I get just a wee bit tired. You are, right? <laughs> well, don't forget I'm carrying the cedar. That's true. I'm starting to drag a wee bit. Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> At first I went, hey, this is bad. But by the time we got to the end of the hill, I'm going, this is uh, starting to weigh me down. I'm going to give you a hand. Oh, oh that's nice. I don't want to see you drop. I still need Woo you for a few hours here. So. We're going to start to get some seed on this field up here. So you can put the seed on top of the snow. You betcha. And you need to walk fast. If you don't walk fast, we get too much seed in one spot. Okay, now we got to turn faster and walk faster. Turn faster and walk faster. There we go. Look at the seed laying out there. That's beautiful. I'm pretty tired. I mean, I'm glad to be off the ladder on the, uh, the TP. How many brothers and sisters you got? I've got two brothers and, and one sister. Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest in, in the home that I grew up in. Now, I have a, and this is getting into a long story, but I have a brother that I found out about a few years ago that's an older brother. And, uh, You're kidding. He was born before my folks got married in a time when... That wasn't supposed was to ...was not acceptable. And right. so uh, she went away and gave him up for adoption. And when we found out, my mom had broke it to us. You got... You got another brother that's a full brother, you know. Are you serious? So, I mean, this is going back three years. So, yeah. you know, I would have been 36 years old. Yeah. To meet somebody that was a full brother was, you know, And your older brother. And, and your older you're brother. You're the oldest right? guy. All of a sudden, I'm not the oldest anymore. That's, and, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, he was family within minutes. So, oh, yeah, very cool that's situation. That's a fantastic story. He's in Ontario, and, you know, I'm always open and excited about uh, 
hanging out with family and just, you know, better in that relationship. You know, one of the, the, the wise visions is, you know, building those healthy communities and families and yeah. those things that happened growing up as a family yeah. are, are so instrumental, I think, in, in even in what I do here. He connects his personal story to his experience with the wise, a YMCA employee. Like, he, he gets it. He really gets what we're all about because it's what he's all about. I've been struggling with this idea of not being myself. But if I was myself, I wouldn't have the same conversation I'm having with Stu. I hadn't thought about it until now, but I'm, I'm actually realizing that there's a lack of truth and honesty in the way that I have been able to have a conversation with somebody else before, because I can never leave that CEO title outside of the conversation. It will always influence the way I interact with people, unless I'm in a circumstance like this. this Stu, thanks very much. Thank you, Bob. Great day. Great to meet you. Get to know you a little bit. Thanks. Take Good care. to meet you. Good to meet you. It's been an amazing day. He's a really great guy. And I'm learning a lot. I'm getting exactly what I wanted to get going undercover. He's got this old truck that he keeps running. He's not got a bobcat. If you just want to give him all the tools he needs, because look what he's doing without the tools. Imagine if he had the tools, how much more he could accomplish. Coming up, the big wigs in deep water. My nice cloth. I think it's just barely hanging on. It's pretty damp in here. And later, he's given the runaround. Kids have so much energy. Hey, good save! It's day two, and the CEO of YMCA Canada, Scott Haldane, is in Alberta, posing as Bob, the volunteer. I'm uh, heading to the Eau Claire YMCA, and I'm uh, going to be working with the pool staff, lifeguarding and teaching swimming. That's where I started my career many years ago, and this is back to the roots for me, and it's actually kind of cool. It's going to be really a lot of fun. I hope that I'll see very, very high safety standards. It's extremely important to, to the Y to make sure that, that that's in place. First and foremost, the pool's got to be safe. Secondly, I hope to see people having fun in the water and learning to swim. Uh, I hope the blue holding this wig on is uh, waterproof because I'm going to be in the pool. So, I, yeah, I'm a little bit worried that we could see some slippage. Hello. Hi. Bob. I'm Bob. I'm Keelan. Nice Hi, to meet Keelan. you. Nice to meet you. I'm the aquatic supervisor here. I've been working here and volunteering for about five or six years. So, were you a lifeguard before? I was many years ago. I'm pitching myself. I can't believe I'm standing beside a pool again. How many staff on your team? We just got a bunch of new hires. We were a little bit short-staffed for a little while. The hiring process is a little difficult. You have to have a valid security clearance because you can work with youth. Okay. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Calgary Police Department, but that takes a little bit of time. Okay. Yes, almost so, six weeks. So when you're hiring for last minute, it, it it's tough. To it's really well. tough. And so that's a challenge, obviously, trying to staff a pool and keep it running and open so that the public can swim. What do you do in that circumstance? We just wait it out. Oh, yeah, we wait it out. We cover shifts. Yeah. Yeah, we work extra hours. We just really need more people. So we're going to set up for the parent and taught class. That's okay. going to happen at 9.30. The Splasher and Bubbler program. Basically, they learn bubbles, bobs. They just get to play in the water. Yeah. We mostly want to they're teach the parents, the parents how to hold their kids in the water so they're safe with their kids in the pool. Sure. So Tamara, this is Bob. Tamara, nice to meet you. Me too. We're going to start with front floats, so if you've never done one before, you're going to hold your child under their arms, bellies in the water, and looking at them, encouraging them to blow bubbles. She's young, she's enthusiastic, she takes her job very seriously. She likes being in the pool. I love working with kids. Seeing those kids' faces, I just couldn't believe how comfortable the kids are in the water. I mean, obviously, the why is having an effect on these, because then their parents are, are learning how to teach them well, because those kids were all happy and uh, all very comfortable in the pool. Dunk, dunk, with a little green frog one day, and his... I was pushing the envelope, so I began to just get my mouth down close enough to the water, but I was conscious I was, you know, try to get your mouth in the water without getting your hair in the water. This is not an easy task, so I think it's just barely hanging on. Okay. So we are going to call it end to the class. Thank you all so much for coming, and I hope I'll see you guys again soon. Great job, everybody. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm getting a little cold. Do you have a dry shirt? I do have a dry shirt for you. You get to put the lifeguard on this time. So when regarding, the only thing is we want to walk around, obviously stand from one corner to the next. You want to make sure you watch from the slide the whole way around. Okay. We have a scheduling issue, Bob. We do? Yeah, one of our lifeguards isn't here yet, okay. so I'm going to call Sam and see if I can get him in early, and you can stay for like 10 more minutes. Okay. Whatever it takes. <laughs> well, uh, they had a lifeguard that didn't show up on time, and they actually weren't sure whether he was going to show up at all. That's when the supervisor part of the job comes yes, in. Yes, yeah, this is when the staff management part comes in. She's got to sit down with him and let him know 
what happens when he comes late and uh, how it affects everybody else and set the expectations once again. I've never experienced staffing before, managing staff, so yeah. it's a challenge for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's hard going from uh, being friends with 16 people to being one of their bosses. One of their bosses, yeah. I had a really hard time with management when I first started. I've gotten a little bit better at kind of being more direct with them, but it's definitely a learning process. I was noticing your, your tattoos oh. in the uh, pool. They look yeah. great. I have a lot of them. Most yeah. of them are memorial pieces for people I've lost. I'm like, my mom is the one on my back. The oh, you lost your mom. I'm sorry. Yeah, to hear that. thank you. Yeah. Was it's that recent? Huh? No, I was 13. Um, 13. Yeah, yeah, she had brain cancer. Yeah. In a rough seven, seven years, uh, I've lost like probably eight people that I'm oh, really my close goodness. to. Yeah. So it's been tough, but I like being able to come to work and get my mind off of it. I think that loss has shaped me as a person because I. Uh, I don't know, I think I just grew from it, and I think I, I deal with things a little bit differently now, and I think it's something that happened, and it sucks that it happened, but it, it did, and you kind of push past it, and you move on, and it makes you a stronger person. So I noticed the anchor. Yeah. I got this for um, my friend Brody um, in high school. He actually killed himself. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It was a lot, one thing after the other. The year that my mom died, my uncle also died, and then my Brody died two years after my mom died, and then my grandpa died, and it was just, and I had a friend killed in a car accident, and... It's been I'm so tough. sorry. Thank you. But you're carrying your loved ones with you everywhere you go. Yeah, that's like the way I like to look at it. She's used all of these things to actually push her and the people around her forward in a very positive way. Um, I hope to think that the, the Y influenced her to do that because she's been in the Y for a very long time. But there's something in Keelan herself, and that's the synergy. When you get you get that potential within someone that connects with the organization. Uh, hopefully the two together are kind of unbeatable, and, and she's she's evidence of that. I wouldn't mind being the aquatic instructor, maybe one day. That's way yeah. down the line. They offer some international travel programs, like to the Ukraine and stuff, oh, yeah. for uh, some leadership roles and working with the youth. And to, to, to visit the Y there? Yeah, for eight months. I think that would be something I'd be interested in. The YMCA is focused on leadership development. She's an ideal young leader with ambitions. So I, I'm going to talk to the CEO here, and I'm very hopeful that she can pursue that ambition within the organization. This has been a great day, Keelan. Yeah, it's been good to meet you, Bob. What I saw today was really exceptional basics. In other words, I, I saw very high safety standards. It was one of the challenges I saw was the just the scheduling of staff, and she just needs more people to be able to draw. So I want to talk to the CEO here about, about that challenge. Coming up, the boss pushes his weight around. There's a lot of stuff to take out there. Yeah. And later, an unfortunate slip puts his entire undercover yeah. operation in jeopardy. Scott, uh, Bob, Bob. Sorry, yeah. way to go. You've blown it. Undercover boss Scott Haldane is being put through his paces as a volunteer in his own organization. Today, he's meeting up with another YMCA staff member at a grocery store in East Vancouver to prepare for the long day ahead. The YMCA is the largest provider of childcare in Canada, so I'm really anxious to see whether the staff and volunteers have created a place for kids to connect with each other and to learn and grow. Excuse me, Andrew? Yeah, hi, how are you? Ah, I'm Bob. Nice to meet you. So you're doing the shopping? Yeah, I'm going to be right shopping now? for today's snack and then the next week as well. And then I get a fruit or a vegetable for each day. They can have fruit and vegetables uh, all day, every day. So healthy eating is a big part of that? Yeah, physical activity and healthy eating are part of our daily requirements. Yeah, very good. Because I'm a big traveler, I've been to 23 countries so far. Whenever I go somewhere, I try to learn something local cooking there, and then I'll bring it back and yeah. try it with the kids. To see him actually living that commitment of healthy eating for kids was pretty cool. Are you from Vancouver? Or, uh... All my parents immigrated here, but I'm uh, born in Vancouver. Yeah. I'm the youngest of nine. Oh, I have a, are you really? A, a big, yeah, big family. Big family. It's like a child care program built right in uh, Yeah, I always laugh. I was definitely uh, prepared at home for what yeah, I did for a good. living. Growing up, uh, my mom was really smart and identified that, you know, with nine kids, you need to involve the community. You're not really going to be able to handle it all on your own. And so that was a benefit of you know, some, some charitable experiences when I was young. And oh, so good. I feel um, really passionate about what the Y does. When I started working for the Y, I just realized that I was doing something that made me happy. And if you can make a living doing what you like to do, you're, you're a pretty lucky guy. Andrew is everything we stand for. I mean, he, he grew up in this neighborhood. He comes from a, from a family that had nine kids. He received financial assistance. Now he's come back and he's actually the leader for all these kids. I mean, it's the perfect YMCA story. I'm a lifer, I think. <laughs> That's good. Well, they, uh, they're lucky to have you, from what I can hear. Because, you know, to have you have your own personal experience and be able yeah. to relate that so much to the kids that you're working with, it must make all the difference. Kids know if you're a fraud. Yeah, yeah. If, if you believe in what you say, you believe in it's easier for them to buy into it. And so sure. a lot of our kids know how much I love working at the Y, and yeah. so it's easier for them to enjoy being at the That's Y. Stuff. We've walked around the grocery store. I know more about him and his philosophy and what the Y means to him and what his background is than, than I'd probably ever know in, in, a, in a conversation between the national CEO and the guy running the child program in the east end of Vancouver. I mean, it just wouldn't happen.
The organization often rents spaces so they can bring their programs into the heart of the community. In this case, a local school provides facilities for the program. So you're here before school and after school? We set up and take down. Oh, you have um, to set up and take down all Every morning and afternoon. Oh, so no it's kidding. A bit of a workout, but we have a small storage room. My staff team's really amazing at making a lot of things fit into a small space. It's like a puzzle. Everything has to go where it needs to go. This is all your stuff? This is all our stuff. Space is always a premium. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, the storage space is very small, and we put a lot of big furniture and a lot of little things in there. It's a real system that you got. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have a floor plan, so everything goes in a specific spot. And okay. Then, There's a lot of stuff to take out there. Yeah. Probably do this in your sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get used to it. Hello. How are you? They have to take everything down, set it back up again three times a day. It's quite common because this is uh, the school's property, so the YMCA is kind of a guest on this site. Where would this go? Over in the far corner? Well, the storage room is not big. I mean, they have a very small space, and it's very tight. There could be some more systems, perhaps. Maybe some of the things could be suspended from the ceiling. There could be some shelving in there that would uh, be really helpful. I mean, there are people who make their living from space organizing, and that might be something that could help out. I feel like we're getting set for the big show here. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> when they get here at 3 o'clock, the, the yeah. pace picks up quick. So I'll, I'll get you started um, at the crafts table. We usually put someone here um, as we're getting here just to help give them direction and to make sure that um, everybody's getting to use the supplies. Um, that's why we come in before the kids are here, so we have time to set up uh, and be ready for them. I'm uh, getting ready for an onslaught of kids that are going to come in and they're going to want to do arts and crafts. Hopefully they're not going to ask me for any guidance. I'm hoping they can be self-directed on this activity. That's why we try to vary things so we can keep them um, excited. Just gonna say hi to the crew. Oh, like, here they come. Good afternoon, guys. Coming up, Scott drops a bombshell. I'm 60. Really? And later, how will Stuart, Keelan, and Andrew react when their volunteer makes a startling confession? I hope Bob the trainee is actually Scott, the national CEO. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Disguised boss Scott Haldane is preparing to entertain an after-school kids group. So we can take stuff out of the out of the package. package. Out of the here they come. As, um, this hey. is Bob. He's going to be here today. He's just checking out the program. How you doing? Nothing What's your name? Miles. Miles. I'm Bob. Hi. What's your name? Angelina. What are you doing? And my name's Bob. I came to help out today. One thing I noticed is these kids are really confident in their space. So here's a stranger coming in from outside. They've not seen me before. They all introduced themselves to me. They shook my hand. It was a, you know, it was a firm handshake. It wasn't, it wasn't just a wet noodle in the hand. I mean, these kids have a confidence that you immediately feel. And that comes from feeling like they're in a safe space, having someone around them that kind of calms things down and makes them feel comfortable. What do you think? Well, kids love Andrew. You can see that right away. Oh, that was amazing, Hannah. He knows all their names. They know him. Which color do you want? Here's some feathers. You working on a dolphin? You can tell that he's comfortable around the kids. My goodness, you have a beard. You didn't shave this morning. They're used to having people in, and they're really welcoming. Full of energy. It feels like chaos, but I can see that there's a system behind it. What do you got? You're doing a turtle? For me, it's kind of overwhelming because the kids are all around, and they're, they all want attention. I, you know, the one thing I can see is the kids really like having an adult around that they can connect with. Sure. Okay, so Ben, you want to help make snack? Any of you guys want to help make snack? Yeah, I do. Okay, it's going to be taco salad. You can come give me a hand. So this is going to be make your own taco salad. You know how old I am? I'm 60. Really? 60. <laughs> Another one asked me if I had all my teeth. You look pretty young. I look pretty young? That's very nice of you. So we're going to put everything in its own little compartment so people can eat what they like. Angelina, if you have glitter on you, you're going to have to wash your hands again. And who's going to be the cheese grater? That, that's a tough job. There you go. Just make sure you don't get your knuckles or anything on those because that will cut your hand. We're going to break the tacos up into little chips. Yeah. We get three more stirs and then Angelina's going to take over. There we go. It's going to be delicious when it all comes together. I'm going to have some, sure. Okay, guys, if you're not cooking, I need everyone to back up. We're almost done. We're definitely a high pay center. You know, having 30 to 40 kids, it's true. You definitely have those moments where they come at you and they, they want to know where something is or they, they want to just uh, interact with you. I'm here just for today. You have a big job to do, but it's fun. You go to school every day, that's a pretty big job. Not every day, sometimes during the weekend, so. That's true. It's really important in a community like this for someone like Andrew to connect with them. A blue whale is almost as loud as a jet engine. That's sad. Wow. No, 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 that's pretty amazing. These kids are facing a lot of barriers, and so to know that the guy that's delivering the program grew up in the same neighborhood, faced the same challenge, had all the things that they can relate to, this makes all the difference for these kids. They can see an Andrew, they can see themselves. He creates an image of where they can go. He creates a path forward for them uh, that you can't get unless somebody comes from the neighborhood where these kids come from. Okay, guys, we're going to do a science experiment. You know, coming from the east side, not a lot of people 
um, have a 100% success story. So I was part of the Boys and Girls Club when I was younger too, and I was a part of the Y really young. So I just had the foundations um, laid really young to be able to make the right choices and avoid peer pressure. And that is a large part of the reason that I stay at the Y is it's a pretty amazing feeling to know that you've helped someone who struggled, but they always knew that they had one place. If things were going tough in class, academically, if things were going tough at home, they could come to the Y and just feel like free to have fun in a safe environment. Did it feel like uh that at your home? When the nine kids were at the table at, for dinner? It was yeah. definitely organized chaos. And I did learn from my mom um, that sense of calmness. She still have that uh, effect on the family? Uh, well, my mom passed away actually oh, no. five years ago. You know, I just took a lot of the tenets of what she taught us. In our conversation up to now, I would never have known that she passed away. Yeah, I sometimes talk about her like she's still here. She's still here. The opportunity I have to make the difference in someone else's life the way she didn't mind. Um, I'm pretty sure she would just say, keep doing what you're doing. Sorry. You're bringing her spirit into what you're doing with these kids. I'm a firm believer that women can change the world, and a strong female role model for that family has obviously made, you know, a wonderful young man who's now paying it forward big time. I mean, he's, his mom's spirit is alive and well in that school. So you should be really proud. I, I just thought today was fantastic. Recently, the YMCA of Shanghai sent some delegates here. They were here to see how the YMCA of Canada works and take some things back and yeah. share some experiences. And okay. I definitely would like People, to go and check out the Y of Shanghai. Well, you, you, you like to travel, so... Uh, if I get the chance, I, I'll definitely be there. Listen, all the best, and thanks very much for the day. And, no worries. And, okay. He's a role model. Those kids, if they aspire to be like Andrew, then they're not going to go wrong. They're going to do well in life. Coming up. What the YMCA did is it taught me to take responsibility for my actions. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Scott Haldane, the national CEO of YMCA Canada, is coming to the end of his undercover operation. Oh, don't I'm forget. starting to get just a wee bit tired. <laughs> But he has one more job to do. I'm here in uh, downtown Vancouver and about to visit the Robert Lee YMCA. I'm meeting with the membership services staff, and this is really uh, an important role. Uh, this is where we interact with our members. I'm anxious to see whether they're connecting with new members, but also serving our long-standing members well. So this is where it all begins. If we don't get this right, uh, people don't come to the Y, and people don't stay with the Y. Morning. I'm here to see Jamie. Yeah. Jamie, I'm Scott. Scott, Scott. pleasure. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm mortified, frankly. I, I, I guess I'm getting tired. I had thought I'd become Bob a little bit more, but I, I said, I said, hi, Jamie, I'm Scott. And I just, I just, like, I felt my blood kind of freeze up. I thought, oh, I'm, way to go. You've blown it. So is Scott with it? Uh, Bob. Uh, Bob. Sorry, yeah. Bob. Yeah, Bob. no. <laughs> I, it was weird. I mean, somebody introduced himself by one name, and then they said, no, no, it's another name. Scott's my middle name, and I switched it around a bit, but, uh, yeah, no, Bob. How are you like yeah. to called? So Bob would be great. We'll go yeah. with Bob? Yeah. You seem to just take it in stride. So let's head on out and uh, we'll take you around. These were called the athlete staircase. Oh, yeah. And the reason being is that our third and our fourth floor is where all of our fitness stuff is. So okay. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta right up to your fitness class. It's like the warm up. But because you're with me, I get to, we get to take the elevator. Very so. good. So how many tours would you do in a day? You yeah. can be doing tours all the time. So this is our main fitness floor. We gauge our shows based on, you know, what the person's looking to do. Sure. Some people are like, I just want to see the gym. Okay, yeah. that's easy. Five minutes, here yeah. it is. Do we have what you need? Yes, no, maybe so, who knows? And then Second floor, where we have our communities programs. So for example, we have like employment programs for young people and, okay. and communication programs. We have all those types of things. Okay. All right, ladies, we're coming in to grab our towels. Okay. You know what? Jamie's a duty manager. Anybody in the building knows who they can call if they need backup. And so Jamie moves around the building. So he goes from a laundry room up to the fitness center over to the child care area, back to the membership desk. He's all over the building and he seems to love it. So let's There's head on back. Registering a member, it's pretty straightforward, but it can be very nerve wracking because we have a lot of international students. You have to work a lot, a lot, a, a lot on the language. And when we do our memberships, is we have paperwork that we need to sign. I'd love to see it in other languages. Does I mean, this change? It's the same for every member. Same for every member. So once you translate this, you don't have to translate it every day. You mentioned the community programs when we were doing the show before, mm -hmm. and I would imagine they do a lot of work with new immigrants. So I would imagine they've got the fix right here in the building. It sounds silly, but it's two years I haven't even thought about going to communities and saying. You know, are there people who could translate this yeah, for yeah, us? Yeah. We can do a better job of recognizing how one of our core programs can help another core program um, in a perhaps unpredictable way, like translation. Hi there. If you are interested in signing up today, we might have uh, Bob here sign you up, and I'll shadow him. I'm Bob, by the way. Chris. Chris. The computer system that we use is the same one that's used by the majority of YMCA's across the country. We're going to hit new, because we want to create a new... New is Sorry, right there. Yeah, Got perfect. it. Okay. I have never actually used it before. Do I put anything? Oh, no, i got to find it to sort of take it off here? Or, uh, We're going to start. Oh, sorry. Nope. 20 years I've known about the class system. I've never sat down and actually put information into it. One, two, three. Excellent. And then we'll just grab the receipt for you. 
Like I said, it's getting old. It doesn't wanna yeah. wanna do its thing anymore. Clearly, there's a problem with uh, with the printer. Yeah, and I do apologize. Today, this printer is being really finicky. Mm -hmm. Yeah back off and open it up and, you know, unjam it, put it, put it back in that. I guess this happens fairly frequently. There are days where that printer just doesn't work for you. The question of what can make my job easier, a printer that didn't break on yeah. every page. So you want those things to run smoothly. Not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me like a relatively easy fix. Printers are uh, not that expensive these days. Again, I do appreciate your patience. Welcome to, the, welcome to the Y. I have never signed up a member of the YMCA before today. What seems easy to us sitting in the office talking about it is a lot harder when you're actually on the floor. I've been here for two and a half years, and I come from the camping division. I come from the camping background. I'm just picturing you at, at <laughs> camp. I mean, it, it, there must have been some real challenges. <laughs> so the first couple of years at camp were not a problem because I had two legs at that time. Oh. I lost my leg in 2003. I was working at uh, YMCA Camp Deckup, and I jumped into a thorn bush, and I got cut above my left knee. And, uh, you know, you're 22, I'm invincible, didn't clean it out, didn't wash it. I went out on a hiking trip, and my knee had swollen up. And I said to my, my co-counselor and the kids, I said, I can't walk down the mountain. This is impossible. And so they banded together like a troop. Yeah. Some of the guys went down and called for an airlift. I got taken into hospital. And then about a week and a half to two weeks later, I woke up from a, a sedative coma. And, so, and, you, so your so, life, your, it wasn't so, just your leg, it was your it was whole life. My whole body. Uh, they discovered that I had contracted necrotizing fasciitis, so flesh eating disease. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is where I need a tissue. Uh, I'm going to join you, by the way, <laughs> if you don't mind. My friends at camp, when they heard about what happened, they would be in visiting me while I was uh, unconscious. There was constant visitors. I was never alone. So they, they basically had a vigil right oh, through that Oh, they had a period. vigil right through that period. And it, was, it was not just for me. It was for my family to know that they had the support of the YMCA. And they had the support of all these people. Uh, so in that time, I went through multiple surgeries. And uh, you know, one of the options was an amputation. I made the decision by myself that that's what I was going to do. There was a lot of thought and care put into it. You could look back on this with some bitterness, because you kind of gave your leg to the YMCA. <laughs> you could put it that way. Yeah, you could. I'm going to say you could. Yeah. But I choose not to. I choose not to. What the YMCA did was it taught me to take responsibility for my actions, be honest with myself. To you know, you're choking me up here. <laughs> this um, is an amazing story. Here's a young guy with a huge issue that's happened to him who has actually figured out how to just put that aside and decide to live his life with no regrets. It's an amazing, amazing thing. That's only part of my life story. That's almost the beginning. The YMCA has impacted my life since from the very beginning, since I was a child. Uh, they have been part of my life in one way or another and for the last 13 years I've had the fortune of working for them and 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 I hope that I've impacted them but more than more than anything they have impacted me and impacted the way I live my life it's been a great day Jamie I really have enjoyed it and uh, thanks for helping me sell my first membership absolutely I'm glad you were able yeah. to give that a try and thanks so much for sharing your story it really is inspiring I'm willing to share my story and if I'm willing to share my story I hope that a member will be one day willing to share their story with me. I had an emotional day. I, I got choked up a couple of times. I feel uplifted and energized by a, a young man like that who can just have such a great attitude about what life is all about and how you overcome the obstacles that, that are thrown at you. Pretty, uh, pretty inspirational uh, guy. I began the week feeling uncomfortable impersonating someone else. By being dishonest, I gave the folks I met with an opportunity to be more honest. This has been a pretty profound learning opportunity and one that I really want to take advantage of. I got some work to do. Coming up, Stuart, Keelan, Andrew, and Jamie are called to the national office, and Scott hits them with reality. So there is no Bob. Oh, wow. You got me. <laughs> Scott Haldane's undercover investigation has come to an end. Stuart, Keelan, Andrew, and Jamie have been called to the national office. They're expecting to evaluate the volunteer they've trained this week. But the trainee is about to make a surprise announcement. Hi, Keelan. Hi there. Bob, how are you? The Bob, I was expecting to see you in a suit. There is no Bob. There is no Bob. There is no Bob. Actually, I'm the present CEO of YMCA Canada. I'm Scott Haldane. Oh, wow. Definitely did not know that. <laughs> you definitely fooled me. You got me. It's amazing what a little bit of Harold did. It really is. I'm going to shake your hand to Scott now yeah. instead. I was wondering what was up here. I went into disguise. Felt a little bad because I felt like I wasn't telling you the truth. Right. And honesty is a YMCA value. But I'm thinking back now to times when I was actually, when I was riding you a little bit at camp. And, uh, that may have changed if I knew you were a CEO. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's, That's exactly right. right. Yeah. So listen, we want to do some things for you to help you do your job a little easier. Now, your wish list uh, included a bobcat. We're going to make it happen. Wow. That's so, uh, so that's you can amazing. retire that 
old truck. That old plow truck, wow. The Bobcat would, would just make a huge difference to us up there. Awesome. Thank you. It's going to happen for you. Awesome. Yeah. I also want to do something personal for you. You know, you told me the story of uh, finding your older brother. Mm -hmm. You haven't had a chance to come to Ontario to see him, so we're going to make that happen as well. We figure that that time is right now. Yeah. So when Bob showed up at camp, you didn't think it was going to bring your brother together? No, I certainly didn't think it was going to bring... No, no, I certainly didn't think that. I don't think I, I work hard to be recognized. This is just a perk. It's a, it's a good day. We got dinner lined up for you guys tonight. Uh, we really want you to spend the time, catch up, and uh, Stu, thanks so much. I got a bobcat and I got a brother. What more could a guy ask for? Keelan, you know, you remind me of me. Because when I started in the Y, I was 20 years old. Yeah. I didn't have nearly the challenges that you've experienced in your life. You were a great inspiration to me. Thank you. That means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. One of the things we'd like to do is to uh, give you an opportunity to participate in the YMCA management training program. Awesome. Thank you so much. The other thing, we want to do something personally for you as well, and there's partnerships with Ukraine, which we right. spoke about. We would like you to have an experience working in those YMCAs oh in, in Ukraine. We just think you'd be such a great <laughs> representative of the YMCA. That's awesome. Oh my God, thank you. It's really nice to be recognized. I wish the people that I had lost were still here to, to see that and be really proud of me. Much thank you so much. It'll just help me. Okay. Keep moving on. <laughs> Andrew, I have to tell you, having all those kids, it's, it's hard to keep up with them all. And it's pretty congested in that uh, storage it area. It really is. I've talked to your CEO, and we're going to get a professional organizer. So oh, wow, can that's amazing. Build some more efficiency into the program. That'll be a great gift, I think, for us to have more time to focus on programming and, and having the kids active and less time on the setup takedown. Yeah, well, let's, let's, see if, let's see if we can fulfill that wish. Thank you. Well, you know, you're such a great YMCA story yourself. I mean, you came through the same program. And uh, now you've become that role model that your mom would be proud of you. Oh, thank you. I, I, I like to think that she is. We would like you to be a member of the delegation that will be representing the Vancouver Y and YMCA Canada in a visit to Shanghai. Wow, really? Yes. I will unequivocally accept right away. I can't think of anyone better to represent the YMCA than you. Thank you. You are so welcome. Really I'm definitely shocked. It's nice to know that people at the top care about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Jamie, there were a few things that didn't quite go as well as you wanted, right? <laughs> the darn printer. How many times did that thing jam? Uh, quite a few. Quite a few times. When you get back to Vancouver, <laughs> you're going to have a new printer. Simple little fixes like that uh, are key to making our, our experience for our members that much better. You actually shared something that I think we can share with YMCA's right across the country, and that was the need to translate our communication information for new members into the most frequently spoken languages. That was a great suggestion. So we'll make sure we get that done for you as well. Absolutely. That's, a, that's, well all, that's also an easy fix. That's fantastic. The fact that you shared your personal story with me was really, really moving for me. It's a why story. As much as it's my story, it's also my why story. Well, your why story is really, really inspiring. Every year, YMCA Canada hosts a national meeting. We bring about 400 of our top YMCA leaders. I would like to ask you to come to Toronto next year as my personal guest uh, and to be a VIP uh, and tell your story to the entire leadership of the Canadian YMCA. That is an amazing honor, and I am... I. Uh... I just, I, all I can really say is yeah, absolutely, I'd love to come. Ah, I don't get this way very often, so thank you so you, much. I never thought that something like this would ever happen to me. It makes my story that much more special now for me. You're such a great ambassador for the YMCA. Well, uh, I was going to say you know, thank you, Bob, just, but it's yeah, yeah, no. gone. Like, yeah. Going undercover has really helped me kind of see how important giving voice and understanding the daily realities of our employees uh, really is. What I experienced with the employees I met were people that want to make a difference in people's lives. And that's really what we're looking for. That's what the organization is all about. I saw that with every single person I met. And if we can encourage that to happen and for, for all of our employees and all of our volunteers, um, it'll be incredibly powerful.